Hi Cubies and Newbies, I am Sunshine. This is the AB Cube Method for Solving Rubik's Cubes. Uh, formula A is 4 moves, brings a piece to the top, works on every complexity Rubik's Cube. Formula B is 8 moves, moves 3 pieces around, that's all you need to do ever. Uh, you hold the cube in your hand, you look at the front of the face as if it were a spreadsheet with rows and columns, and the arrow represents the single col the slice that you are moving, and the line represents the rest of the cube, so you're only moving you're always only moving one slice at a time. <clears throat> and each formula, formula A is four moves, one row, one column, formula B is eight moves, one row, top row, two columns. Uh, it works on every complexity Rubik's Cube, and it also works on the every, every complexity Minx. I'm sorry I missed streaming yesterday, I was <laughs> with, <laughs> with my grandbabies. So, Saturday I, I showed the corners and how to do the entire first, entire first face with Formula A. Today, I'm going to, I feel like I want to scramble my... This is the Gigaminx. been described as rambling and I agree my streams my twitch streams can ramble uh, if you however on uh, YouTube I have a uh, web um, playlist that is j that is more concise that is just simply uh, all of the steps from my AB cube tutorial which you can find on abcube.how and the the I'm still editing it because it's not as elegant <coughs> as I'd like it to be. But it, 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 the videos all ended up in, a, in a, a playlist that is more elegant, which you can find on YouTube. everyone's having a happy morning. The, uh, the Gigaminx can also be solved with the AB cube method. The difference between the gig between a minx and a cube as far as this method goes is that the minx has an order of operations. Uh, you want to do the star pieces before you do the non-star pieces <coughs> because when you, when one of your two columns for formula B is the center column. It has ancillary movements of the non-star non pieces. So if you do those first and then do the star, you have to redo them. But if you do the star first, uh, you haven't done them yet, so you only do them once instead of twice. And with the cube, uh, it doesn't matter which order you do, but you can have a, but parodies are possible. Uh, parodies, however, are a lie. They're caused by one, one of your layers, one of your slices on the cube, being a quarter turn off, and you can't tell what. It is. And <clears throat> when you correct that with that quarter turn, the parody disappears. So you don't have to learn and memorize parody algorithms, although you can if they're fun. Good morning. I am here. If anyone has any questions in the meantime, I'm going to play with my minx. I'm going to start with the, the star pieces.
and for the first for the first face, just like this one, for the first face you can just kind of intuit it where it wants to be. But uh, you can all, the formula A's and formula B's <clears throat> work on the last faces as well. So, you, <laughs> all right. So I've got the whites. Um, I just I I go layer I go roughly a slight layer by layer or side by side uh, when I'm doing the minks. for the red star arms. And what I'm doing in the mink, there's a lot of looking for pieces that isn't there when I'm doing the cube because the minx has more faces so it's more jumping around. And I'm not using the formulas now, I'm just kind of intuiting things into place. I'm looking for another yellow star arm. I don't know the names of these pieces. next and then I'll do green Okay, I can just intuit those into place. <clears throat> when it comes to the green, uh, it's more a matter of uh, formula. The last of the bold colors is more a matter of formula A. I have the piece under where it wants to be. I move it away. I move the space down and the piece into the space and the piece and space back up again. So I'm not messing up my, and I am messing up. <laughs> See how I'm not messing up my A's? Okay.
All right. And then I do the second half of the stars. Uh, formula, formula A. The opposite, the upside down of formula A, because I have the piece. I bring the piece up, space up. Bring the piece into the space, and then bring it back into position. Okay, so now that the star parts are now that the center star parts are done, <coughs> I then will work on the. I like. I'm going to do the complete center before I move to the outside, which is the exact opposite of what I do when I'm doing the cubes. <coughs> when I'm doing the cubes, I do the corners first, so they dictate the the, the colors of the face, and then I do the edges uh, so that uh, they are the, they will then be visual clues for when I'm doing the centers. Because there's the more columns you have, the easier it is to get uh, confused. So the visual, ed the edge corners and edges are there as visual clues as I'm doing the other ones. Also, if you do the centers last, then when you have a parity on the edge, a single quarter turn corrects the parity, and you don't have to redo your centers because you <coughs> haven't done them yet. So. Uh, I'm happy. Any, if you have any questions. Uh, do interrupt me. I'm happy to stop and answer questions and demonstrate, but uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to play <laughs> today. Uh, I, like I said, um, I was someone has commented that my videos are rambling, and that's true for the ones that are Twitch up, up Twitch uploads. However, the uh, um, if you go to YouTube and look at my my playlist, uh, that is more concise and detailed and <clears throat> better for learning than the Twitch. Twitch is more, the, the live stream is <laughs> I'm trying to <laughs> find people like me. Okay, so this piece is going to come up, going to move up. 
uh, formula A, formula B is is eight moves. This is the, the I follow on the, for the center. You follow the piece. So there's first up, move to a second second column, second up, and then reverse. And see my my star pieces are the visual for where I've been working, so I don't lose track of myself. Okay. Here's another white piece. Line it up with <clears throat> something advantageous. <coughs> uh, the purple's going to go in that direction, so I'll bring the blue down. And then follow this piece. It goes up, slide to a different column. Second up, reverse down, reverse down, and that's formula B. And one more, find another white. I don't look for pieces and then place them when I'm doing cubing. I just find a piece that's wrong and throw it in the right direction. Uh, I do actually look for pieces on the minks because there's more sides to go and so there's more uh, jumping around a little bit. So this white piece, I'm going to jump it to, I'm, I'm going to get, move it in two jumps to get to where it wants to be. So. Um, this green is advantageous to bring down. I'll do that. So up, slide to a different column, second up, reverse, and the front face color is there to guide me on which columns I'm at. <coughs> and then again, line it up, first up, slide, second up, reverse, first down, second down. And having done the star pieces, not only is it, it it's helpful to and placing the other rest of the center rest pieces because it's a visual clue which columns I'm on so I don't get confused. So white's done for the centers. Let's find red. Here's a red. Uh, let's bring the orange down since it wants to come this direction. So up, slide up, reverse down, reverse down. So the two columns are where the cube is to begin with and <laughs> we follow it. So here's a red. I want to bring the, a green or a purple and blue or blue down, purple or light blue down. So let's bring the light blue down because those are those are the most advantageous. So up, up, down, <coughs> down, Here's another red. Um, <clears throat> okay. Bring the yellow down. Up. Slide. Second up. Reverse down. Reverse down. <clears throat> and only only three pieces are moving. <clears throat> Whenever you're not using the center slice, only three pieces are moving. Let me just demonstrate what's happening. So let's say, let's pretend this is one piece. This, so we go up, slide, second up, reverse, <coughs> down, reverse, down, and set the top. So this piece moved up, this piece moved down, this piece moved over. <coughs> Um, and so this one only has, a, but you can do it with the individual pieces as well. So let's say that I only wanted to move this piece. I would go up, slide it over. This, this is my second column is where that I'm following that piece. And then reverse down reverse down and so you can do all four of them you can do one at a time you can do two of them at a time let's say I want to do these two pieces go up slide second up reverse down reverse down but you can see that the rest of the cube is not being affected by, whatever, by whenever I'm doing a Formula B. Formula B still will only move three pieces around. So, 
my a my <clears throat> this red's in place. Looking for more reds. Here's a red. Okay. I will bring the purple down since it's the, in this direction. So we go up, slide up, reverse down, reverse down. And again, the center arm, the ar stars, the ar arms of the star are visual when I'm doing the centers of the star. So this red. Um, bring your blue down. Up, slide, up, reverse, down, reverse, down. Okay. Another red, another blue, up, slide, up, reverse, down, reverse, down. can let that be in place so I haven't worked on them yet doesn't matter uh, another red here's it is and it's opposite so it has to jump a couple of times so let's bring this orange down up slide up reverse down reverse down and again, let's bring this green down. Up, slide up, reverse down, reverse down. And last piece, up, slide up, slide down, slide down. Do, 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 looking for blues. Here it is. Here's one. Center pieces, blue diagonal centers. Okay. So I will bring, I guess, the gray down. No, I'll bring the purple down. That's a good one. Up. Up, down, down, line it up, uh, yellow is the most advantageous of my choices here, the lemon is the most, so we go up, up, down, down, okay, we're looking for one more, let's see this. <clears throat> work with what I've got before I go looking for more pieces. Uh, gray. Up. Up. Down. Down. And purple. Up. Up. Down. Down. And another yellow. Up. Up. Down. Down. Okay. Now the screen wants to go the screen wants to go over here, as does this one. So I'm going to go through the purple. Shortest distance. Up. Up. Down. Down. And <clears throat> uh, gray up, up, down. 
um, down. Okay, so on of the bold faces, the rest of them are all pastel. So here's a green that wants to go this way. Um, I'm going to displace the red, or else I'm going to go one, two, or one, one, two, three, or one, two. Yeah, I'm going to go around the red. There's the purple going on this way. Purple wants to come down. Let's do that. Up, up, down, down. And then bring the pink down. Up, up, down, down. And up. purple and wants to go this way. Up, up, down, down. And then, uh, how about the pink? Up, up, down, down. <sighs> Hi, you guys. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. If you've just found me, I am Sunshine. I'm the creator of the AB Cube Method for Solving Rubik's Cubes. Works on every complexity Rubik's Cubes and on Minxes. I'm playing with Minxes today. Uh, if you... If you have any questions or comments or want to chat with me, just hop in. Otherwise, I'm going to keep playing with my minks. Um, the, you can find me, the bio will tell you where to find me. I have, uh, I, you can find me at apcube.how. Uh, and that is a step-by-step -step for every complexity of the Rubik's Cubes as we go along. And the, uh, the, there's a, the playlist and the YouTube playlist of all of the videos that are there are on a playlist in YouTube. Uh, if you go to YouTube, you want to look at my playlist rather than my, most of my uploads are just, most of my videos there are just uploads from Twitch. So they're kind of rambling, but if you go to the playlist, it's more concise and it's what you want. If you have any questions or comments, or just want to say hi and tell me where, what you're, how fast you are, or where you're streaming from, that would be awesome. Uh, so, but all I, all I ever use is formula A, formula B. Formula A brings a piece to the top, formula B moves three pieces around. I'm do, using formula B right now for the centers of my star, uh, my minks. And that's all you need to do. You can get, if, if you have a parity, if parity is a lie, it's caused by the cent, the, it's caused by the center, a center slice being a quarter turn off. And it is, the slice that's a quarter turn off is the one that touches your parity. So if it looks like there's two pieces and only two pieces that want to move, uh, there's always three. The third is the piece you can't see. So move that piece and your parity disappears. Unless you want to play with parity algorithms. All right, so here's a blue. Um, that wants to go up here so I can go either through the green or through the pink. Stick, please. There we go. I'll bring the... I'll bring the yellow down. Up, up, down, down. And should have gone to the green side so I could be more one step ahead. That's okay. Up, up, down, down. And because I did the star parts first, um, the, star parts, the star parts there are there as a visual clue which columns I'm on so I don't get confused as I'm working. Okay, so we've got white, we've got the red, the blue, we've got some more yellows and purples and greens to do. So let's, here's a yellow. Okay, 
and move it one step down so it's lined up with this piece. I go up, first up, slide into a different column, second up, reverse down, reverse down, and that cube, that cube is placed. Uh, and okay, so we're looking for <coughs> white and red and blue. So we're looking for yellows, purples, and greens. So let's find. Here's a purple. Okay. We're gonna, I can bring down either the blue or the gray, so I'm going to bring down the gray because it's a step farther away from the purple. Up, up, down, down. I do love, <laughs> I do love the minxes. Um, here's a green. It moves two steps two steps away, so I'm going to the what red is solid. I'm going to go through the yellow. I'm going to bring. Um, oh, you know what? I'm going to bring this yellow because so it can go over closer to the other one. So up, up, down, down, and then this green wants to go up here. I'll bring the yellow down. Up, up. Down, down, and this yellow that I moved over here wants to come up, so let's do that. So this yellow is going to change with this pink. Now it looks like two pieces are going to move, but it's always three pieces. Mark it so you can see which way it goes. When two of the colors are the same size, same color, it looks like you're moving two pieces. But this one's going to go up, but this one's not going to come down here. It's going to go over here, and the green will come in. So up, up, down, down. So there's always three pieces we're moving. And then the yellow once more. Bring the pink down. Up. Up, down, down. Okay. Um, so we have. We still have a yellow and a purple. Oh, here's the purple. Let's do that one. Next. Bring it down. Line it up. For up, slide top. Second up. And then slide, and we're bringing the blues back down. And the purple's in place. We've got two greens and a yellow we're still looking for. Here's a green. Here's the two greens. Ha ha. Okay. So, this one. Line up the blue. Up. Up. Down. Down. And for the second one, we'll line up the last piece, which is gray. Okay. And so again, this gray is not going to come here. It's going to go over here. So up. Up. Down. Down. Okay. All right, so now just one more yellow, I think. Okay, and then the, and then my whites and bolds are done. So let's find a yellow. Where is there is a yellow? There's a yellow, and it's going this way. So I can bring down. Um, the this one, the lemon, up, up. Down, down, and bring the orange down, up, up, down, down. Okay. So the whites and the bold centers are done. And that's. All right, um, let's, I'm going to switch over to the cube because that's what most of you came for. <laughs> the cube, not the minks, I think. 
Um, the, which, whichever cube you have has eight corners, every, every, and so um, no matter what cube you have, it can always solve it, start with the corners, because they all have corners. Um, now, we used to work back in the 80s, <laughs> when the cube was new, and we never changed it, because if it's, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Uh, we work around the centers, the absolute center, because that dictates what the colors are going to be, because the center is one single piece into itself, and it does not move relative to itself. That went out the window when we came up with the 4x4, four because four, you could then, if you started with centers then, you could get the centers in the wrong place if you weren't careful, and then the, you'd have to re redo them unless you, until you memorize the orientation of the centers. I work with newbies, and so they haven't memorized the orientation of centers, so we just do corners. Corners then dictate what color every face of the cube is going to be, okay? Uh, corners are done. Formula A brings a piece to the top. Formula B moves three pieces around. And I can I can go back and demonstrate that if anyone wants. Otherwise, you've got lots of places <laughs> you can look for. <laughs> um, however, once the corners are done, then the second step is to do the opposite edges. You can do it. You, you can go layer by layer. You can do anything you want. This, these are always just suggestions. But I go, I do the second corners first. So I've done, I've done the, fir the corners first, now I'm going to do the opposite edges. White's already done. I demonstrated formula A for that. I can't use formula A for the rest of the cube because it will mess up things up. Uh, let's line up the center. So, with, with yellow and white left and right, because yellow and white are, are the opposite edges that I'm working with, uh, and you can translate if you're color neutral, whatever you want to do. But I, I use yellow and white left and right, and then I find pieces in the middle that have the middle being anywhere, any any slice between the two column, the two outer columns is what I'm calling the middle. I look for any piece in the middle area that has yellow or white on it, and my white's done, so it's all going to be yellow. But I find a piece. You know that yet that yellow is either going to be on the front or the top. I want it to be on the top so I can line the corners up with the front, and then it's going in the yellow direction. So the two columns are where it's going to land, where it begins, and of course the row is the top row. So I start by moving the piece away because it's going to land here. So this, so away, first up, back, second up, and there it is placed. Reverse down, back, down, and that piece is placed. Now I'm not pairing things up. I'm not pairing my edges up and then placing them later, uh, which seems to me just to be, to be a double effort. Uh, including a bunch of looking around for the pieces that you want. Whereas I just find a piece that's wrong, line the corners up, throw it in the direction it wants to be, and they will pair themselves up. If you just if you just take the piece you find, put it where it wants to be, they'll pair themselves up. Uh, which it, which pairing working doing the reduction method tends to increase your probability of a parity because they want, the slices want to slide uh, individually so that uh, they have a chance of being where they want to be and when you start treating them as one piece instead of as two you're just, you're slightly increasing your odds against yourself. So here's the yellow, yellow and white are left and right, corners match the front, it's going in the white, in the yellow direction, away up, in, up, away, down, in, down. Now it's always just two columns and I don't have to memorize which two columns do what, I just have to pick a piece that's wrong and throw it in a direction, follow the pattern, follow the the cube itself dictates what those two col columns have to be because the first one is where it's going to land and the second one is where it begins. <clears throat> so, away, up, in, up, away, down, in, down, I'm going to go so far as getting the, I had the whites done, I'm going to go so far as getting the yellow edges correctly placed, and uh, at that point, <laughs> you have until then to start asking me questions, because that's as far as I'm going to go, unless you guys have questions for me. So, another yellow in the middle, it's on top, not the front, uh, so I bring corners to match the front. Okay, um, I and then bring this, it's going in the so it's going to land here. So away up, in up, away down, in down. Okay. 
Uh, this this one had these. There's lots of yellows on the top, but I want to show what to do if the yellow's on front. If the yellow's on front, I want it to be on top. I flip the cube, reversing my left and right. But yellow and right, yellow and white are still left and right. Doesn't matter which order. So now I bring the corners to match the front. Determine its direction. Move it away, up, in, second up, reverse down, reverse down. Okay. So. Uh, if the piece is moving to the right, it's B as written. If it's going to the left, it's each P, each move is is the mirror of what you're doing. But you start by moving the piece away, first column up, back into place, second column up, and then finish the pattern, the formula. Okay, corners match the front, away, up, in, up, away, down, in, down. So, corners match the front, it's going in the yellow direction, so away, first up, back, second up, away, down, back, down. As you can see, Every other move is horizontal, every other every other horizontal is the reverse of the one before it. Every up there's a down, it's a mathematical zero, it's a commutator. So you're only ever moving three pieces. And you're only ever moving the three pieces that you want to move. Take for instance this yellow and red. I bring the corners to match the front. And the piece that I that, that I've selected is incorrect. And the where it's going to land is also incorrect because each corner, each edge piece has only one place it can land. So at least two, I'm, I'm moving three pieces and at least two of these pieces are incorrect and one's going to be, one of those is going to be correct. So I don't really care much <coughs> what that third piece is yet. So <coughs> away, up, in, up, away, down, in, down. Another yellow. And I'm, I'm keep doing this until in rotating to find them until the, all everything in the cent, my central area until the yellows or whites are ex, are exhausted and moved out of the way um, when i run out of yellows then i will assess to see whether the sides are correct or not they might be and they might be misplaced just based on how the cube was originally scrambled so corners go here away up in up away down in down Okay, there's no yellow on this side, so I rotate. There's one right here. Corners match the front. Okay, the last one on this side, so away, up, in, up, away, down, in, down. I'm going to keep going until I run out of, I've already run out of the white, so I'm running out of yellows. Line it up, away, up, in, up, away, down. In, down, another piece, I'm going to flip it so that my active color is on top, bring the corners to match the front, and as written, move it away, first up, <coughs> back, <coughs> back, second up, away, down, back, down, okay, no yellows or whites here, there's a one right there. I'm just going to keep going for as long as there's a yellow or a white. Away, up, in, up, away, down, in, down. Okay, nothing on this side. There's one here. Flip. Corners match the front. Away, up, in, up, away, down, in, down. Okay. No yellow or whites, no yellow or whites, no yellow or whites. When they have disappeared, then we, ask, we, ask, we assess. <coughs> whites are correct, and we look at the yellows to see whether they're, the edges are in between the, col the corners they're supposed to be between. Um, most of the time they will be. Sometimes they won't be, or they'll be there, but they're flipped, in which case I take a garbage piece from the middle and throw it into the spot that's incorrect, which will move it out to the middle, and then I then I place it with formula B and keep going until, until they're all done. 
So we've established that formula, formula A brings a piece to the top, formula B moves three pieces around, uh, formula B for the edges moves a piece from the top front to the side front. And having done that, <clears throat> the next step would be continue working with the edges and we're going to start working on the side edges. So white face goes down. I said I was I said I was going to stop here, but I'm going to demonstrate before I go. So <clears throat> at this point in time, I'm going to start displacing displace my yellow pieces to bring incorrect pieces to the top so they can be worked on. Um, I can either do that do this one column at a time, in which case we're on, we'll, we're working on just that layer, and then move to the next column, or I can go as I go as far as to to and including the center, but I don't want to go over because I'm if there if there is a parity I want to force it to be on the same side opposite each other rather than adjacent just because it makes it easier to fix. So I'm going these pieces are incorrect. I'm going to displace these pieces. Okay, so away up in up away down in down and what I've done is I've displaced some yellows and the other yellow edges are gonna as I work with these pieces these yellow edges are keep, I'm gonna go back and forth as because <clears throat> formula B moves from the top front from the top top front to the side front and the back one is the third piece so when my yellows all come back to the top again either correctly or incorrectly doesn't matter as long as they're back to the top layer, then I will assess. In the meantime, I just pick pieces one at a time and throw them in the direction where they want to go. Uh, now's a good time for me to die because I can see what the absolute center is because it's an even number of cubes. I'm going to start by lining up my center there. If I did not, if it was an odd number of turns off, I'd get a parity on the middle layer. If it was an even number of turns off, I would not. I, have, I would have some form of boxes. But since I can, so now's a good time to set that up just to avoid one parity. So I hold the top row, top layer, move the entirety of the cube until the corners match the front. So blue, we're ignoring everything on the top that's yellow. We're only looking at the not yellow right now. So corners match the front and it's going in the red direction. So this side, so the blue and red edge pieces will land above the blue and red in something corners, not the blue and orange something corners. So it's going this direction and they're together so I can treat them as one until it becomes not convenient. Um, which is right now because I, I can either treat these as one or these as one. It doesn't matter. So I'll just do the one. Slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down. And this one's correctly placed and I go to the next piece. Oh, I should have just done it together. Um, up, up, down, down. So I'm not afraid of displacing them if it is not advantageous, if it's advantageous to do so. So bring the corners to the front, determine its direction, away, up, and up, away, down, and down. Okay, and then I look for on top that's not yellow. Good morning. If you've just joined me, I am Sunshine. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for letting me be in the background of your day as you're getting ready for work or school or whatever it is. Okay. Okay, corners, corners match the front. I read left to right, so I'm, that's how I usually find my pieces, but it doesn't matter. So this one's going over here. First column, second column, top row. Away, up, in, up. Away, down, in, down. Okay. And then another piece. Bring the corners to match the front. Determine its direction. Away, up, in, up. Away, down, in, down. Okay. Corners match the front. Away up, in, up. Away down, in, down. 
and my yellows are at front, I look at the back of them, back of the cube, corners to match the front. These two can both, both want to go this way so I can place them both, but I don't want to displace this one. Away up, in, up and up, away down, back, down and down. Okay. And then this one, corners match the front, going in this direction, away up, in, up, away down, in, down. And I keep going for as long as there is a not yellow on top. Okay, so these ones want to go this direction, up, up, down, down. One of my yellows found its way to the top. I'm ignoring it until I am run out of not yellows. Okay, corners match the front for this one. It's going the red direction. Away up, in up, away down, in down. I've stopped, I've lost my marker, there we go. Okay, another piece that's not yellow. Corners to the, corners to the front, determine its direction. Away up, in up, away down, in down. And then look at the other side. And my yellows are slowly finding their way back to the top, but I'm going to keep ignoring them until I run out of not yellows. Okay, so corners match the front. It's going in this direction. Away up, in up, away down, in down. And one more not yellow. Still corners match the front. First column, second column, away up in up, away down, in down, another one, corners match the front, it's going in this direction, away, up, up, down, down, and you see how my edges are there being a guidance for the columns that I'm on, in case my cat jumps up and distracts me or Drop the cube. Alrighty. Here's another one. Okay, it's going in this direction, and that sure enough is a white, so it's going to come back to the front, back to the top. So up, up, down, down. And when the yellow, I said white, when the yellow comes back to the top, we reass we, then it's time for us to assess. So. Um, whether it is correctly or incorrectly placed, it's now time to look at the sides and see if they're correct. So this one is correct, this one is correct, this one is not, and this one is not. So there are two pieces, <laughs> and only two pieces which, that are not correct. Um, I can I can displace one, and then I can I can force the parity to show up on the top, but it doesn't matter. There is a parity, and Whenever there's this piece wants to be here and this piece wants to be here. Um, since it's on the side and it's the only two pieces, I'm going to work with it on the side rather than moving it to the top and then back down again. So this is the parity. Here's one piece, here's the second piece, the third piece is the layer it's on. So I rotate that layer one quarter turn, either direction, and now of those four corners on that row, one is correct and three are not correct. And we know how to move three corners around, three edges around. Uh, you have a parity to do that. You have an algorithm to do that. I'm going to use formula B uh, just because it's fun to know that I can solve the entire cube. So I'm going to, this cube is wrong. I'm going to displace a yellow into that spot. Up, up, down, down. And then I'm working again on top with what's not yellow. Corners to match the front. It's going in this direction. Up, up, down down, corners wrench to the front, it's going in this direction, up, up, down, down, corners match to the front, going in this direction, up, up, down, down, set the top, and we're done. All right, you guys, oh, first time chat. I don't know what WIW means, but hi. <laughs> How are you, Agent 800? 800, 800B? 
Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, you like me? Thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. Your first time chats. Have you seen me do, um, this is, I am the creator. Oh, I'm good. And you, thank you so much. I am happy. Uh, I'm the creator of the AB cube method for solving Rubik's cubes. Formula A is four moves. Formula B is eight moves. <clears throat> and that's all you need to solve every complexity Rubik's cube. Uh, you don't have to, formula A brings a piece to the top. <clears throat> formula B moves three pieces around. And that's all you ever need to do because the cube is inherently honest and it will and if you have a parody, a parody is a lie. The parody just tells it parody is there as an indicator to tell you that one of your centers that is a quarter turn off. I so solve so so solve a Rubik's cube. Well this is not a speed method. This is not a fewest moves method. In fact it's rather clunky and it uh, move inefficient. But when I teach it, it's total teach time of two hours, and that's not just for the three by three. That's for every complexity Rubik's cube. Um, I legit teach. <laughs> I legit teach people. This cube is very big. This is a seven by. No, one, two, three, four, five. Yes, this is a seven by. But the same pat. So this the AB method works on every complexity Rubik's cube because uh, if if there's always three it, formula A brings a piece to the top. B moves three pieces around, and that's all you ever need to do. Uh, you, you just saw the demonstration of what to do if you have a parity. Uh, parity is always caused by the center being a quarter turn off. Rotate that quarter turn, and your parity has disappeared. Poof, and everything's good. Uh, so it works on every complexity Rubik's Cube. It works on some others as well. Um, I have a 3x3x9 three by three by with Eden Cube that it works on with a slight adaptation. It also works on the Minxes as well. So uh, every size and every size and complexity of minxes. I have not tried the pyramids yet, uh, <laughs> simply because I haven't had my hands on a pyramid since I created this method. Uh, this method is published online in 2020. Um, I'm still in still in the process of uh, trying to attract the right agent so I can get it published in manuscript in my manuscript published in book form, because that would be just a dream for me. This is the Gigaminx. This is this is the this is the Megaminx. This is the Gigaminx. This is the I don't know which the which the seven one is, <laughs> but uh, Formula A, Formula B, the same thing for this as for the other ones. The difference between the cube and the minx, I'll say this again, uh, is that the cube can have a parity, but it's but it's solved with a quarter turn. And the minx cannot have a parity because the parity is caused by the, by one of the layers being a quarter turn off. Now on a cube, if I make the if a quarter turn off this way, is three quarter turns off this way, so both one and three are both odd. However, a quarter turn on the minx, one quarter turn off this way, is four quarter turns off this way. So, it's, it's, so since four is an even number, you can the the minx you can get rid of the minx the parity. So you don't have to deal with parodies on the minxes. But you do have an order of operations because if you're, one of your two columns is the center, it has ancillary movements that are not intended. <clears throat> so if you do the star parts first and then the non-star parts, then you don't have to redo anything that happens when, you, when you're using the center. This cube is very, very big. <laughs> Where are you watching from, Agent? I do have big cubes. I have pretty cubes too. Let's see. A, let's see a pretty cube. There's a pretty cube. It's metallic. It's shiny. It my. You know, I'm from Colombia. Well, thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it. <laughs> so this is shiny. It applies. It appeals to the crow part of my brain. So that's it. Do you have any? If anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer questions. Other than that. My kitty cat wants me to go feed her. So, <laughs> um, so that's me for the day. Does anyone have any questions for me before it's time for me to sign up? It's beautiful. Oh, the shiny one. Yes, thank you. I have a dragon cube. You want to see my dragon cube? It's beautiful. Okay. 
Well, all right. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for talking to me. I appreciate all of you. And I will be back. I'm here most mornings. Uh, sometimes on the... Oh, sure, I'll wait for you. I'm going to get, while I'm waiting for Agent, I'm going to get my dragon cube. Give me one second. Okay, let's clear my space a little bit. I have other things that are Rubik's that are not cubes as well. Rubik's tried to do a bunch of things to stay popular, to stay relevant. This is the picture. Ha ha, ooh, there we go. There we go. This is the dragon. Comes with its own stand. It's very, very hefty. It's very hefty. The dragon is on most of the cubes. There are a couple of cubes that it's not on, so it can be solved in more than one, uh, one position. And there is my dragon cube. Anyone else have any questions for me while I'm being patient with Agent? Thank you. I'm proud of it. I'm proud of it. I also have other cubes. I have the void cube. I have a one by one cube. I have a spinner cube. Fidget spinner. Okay. Um, where am I from? I am in Utah. Which is interesting story because I got uh, the um, phantom cube for Christmas <laughs> and the phantom cube is uh, temperature specific and so it's black until you touch it with your hands and then you can see the colors you're supposed to solve it while you can see the colors <laughs> my hands are so cold <laughs> that I couldn't solve it all through winter <laughs> It was not this Christmas, but a year ago. It took me six months before I could solve the cube because I couldn't get my hands to heat up the cube enough. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, so, if you, ha if, you, if you want to know more about me, um, my bio here on Twitch shows you different places you can find me. This method is also linked on Wikipedia for the Professor's Cube as one of, as a original, so as a single specific solve. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea uh, how many cubes I have. Um, I different. No, I just I teach, and and when I teach, sometimes I just give my cubes away. I. But uh, I've I've just moved here a couple months ago. Still waiting to get uh, my um, shelving up on the wall so I can have a display for all my cubes. They're currently in backpacks and bags and crates. <laughs> So, uh, I I don't I don't know how fast you are, but uh, I am not I am not a speed solver. I sometimes race. 
and it's fun when I do for me. Um, <laughs> but real speed solvers have to give me, it's like, okay, I'm going to do my two, my three, my four, and my five while you do your five kind of thing because I'm not, I'm not real fast. Um, I have beaten a minute once, so I am, I have been at one time, <laughs> sub one minute, but I'm certainly not, uh, not there. And I'm, I average about a minute and a half and I'm consistently sub two. But uh, other than that, I'm not, because uh, I, I do my cues with muscle memory. So, and I learned back in the 80s and I haven't actually been able to <laughs> do much improvement. <laughs> but uh, back in the 80s, I was three minutes and now I'm down to a minute and a half. So that's improvement. How fast are you, Agent? If you, are you a speed cuber or are you just a pleasure cuber? Alright, since I'm here, I'm going to do some more of these. I'm going to, going to continue on my, on my, my cube uh, to show how formula, so formula B, how it affects the center cubes. Uh, you pick a piece that you want to move, just find a piece that's incorrect. Any piece. Here's a, just find any piece that's incorrect. Okay, here's a yellow piece that's on the red side. You have the incorrect piece on the front. Hold the, move the cut so the color where it wants to be is on top. So this piece wants to go to the top. As it does, it's going to land right here in this spot. So I can either bring down a yellow, a red, a green, <coughs> or a blue. So I'm going to line it up so that it's most advantageous. And then formula B, move three pieces around. So um, I don't have to memorize. So when you use the outside columns, top row outside columns, you're moving corners, top row outside and inside column, you're moving edges, top row two inside columns, you're moving centers around. So you line it up so it's advantageous, then you follow follow the piece that you're moving, because you're only moving, you, you only care about one of the pieces, uh, and where it's going to land, two, two thirds of the problem. So go up, that's the first, that's your first stop, slide so that th that piece is in the second column. If it's a diagonal, you have to be a little bit careful, because if you go this way, it's the same column. You know, it needs, needs to be two different columns. And then this is the second up. And then reverse. And the, because the edges are down, are done, that shows me which column I'm on. What is the biggest cube I have? The biggest one I have, let's see, I have two 11 by 11s. This is one of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, this is the 10 by 10. I have an 11, but it's over there. Uh, I don't generally... I don't generally solve my 11 because it's a pillow to cube and when it, when the cubes are big like this it's hard to line them all up again. I, I sometimes have to tap it on the table to get the low rows to line up so I can move. So this is my 10 by 10. I do have an 11. Uh, the 11 I didn't buy, didn't buy new. I bought it as part of a lot of cubes from uh, Mercara. Merca Mer Mercara. Uh, and Someone had, it had been well loved. It was missing some stickers, so someone had bought stickers and replaced them. So some of the sides of the sides have, like, the red had two different color of red stickers. You could tell that it was not together. So I'm going to have to eventually take all the stickers off and put them all on again. But something you might not know about big cubes. Do you have, do you do, do, you do big cubes or just the three by three, Agent? But if you have a big cube and you have to take it apart and put it back together again, we have all been trained, all cubists have been trained that when you put a cube back together again, you have to put it back together again in the correct solution or else it's possible to put it back together again in an unsolvable state, which is true of the three by three, <clears throat> which is when we develop that rule because every piece can only be correctly placed in one spot. So it has to be put reassembled in the same direction. Um, and for larger cubes, it's the same for every piece that you know how to put it together. I have not taken my 11 by apart yet. The biggest piece I've put together uh, is my 7 by. 
<laughs> I haven't taken anything bigger than, bigger than that apart. But when you do take it apart to put it back together again, the corners, the edges, and the absolute center piece do have to put, be put together again in the correct position for the reasons we all know. But when you get to larger cubes that have not that have pieces that can be correct in more than one spot, for example, this yellow corner piece can be correct next to the red, yellow, blue corner, or it can also be correctly placed over here next to the red, yellow, green corner, or it can be correctly placed here. So every cubie, every center cube that is not the absolute center can be visually correct in one of four places, and with, when you add that to the mathematics of the cube, it's impossible to get it wrong unless you have a, unless you have a shape shifter. So when you take a big cube apart, <coughs> teach you how to put together the 3x3. Three three. I don't have any of mine that come apart easily. Um, back in the 80s, back in the 80s, the original Rubik's Cube, the blue and orange piece had a notch in it. So if you turned it, turned it counterclockwise like that, you could pop that cube out and take it apart and then put it back together again with that piece being the last one. Uh, I don't have a screwdriver to take my cubes apart, uh, so I can't do that. But, but, if you have a 3x3 three three and you have not taken it apart and put it back together again, you don't actually own the 3x3. Three three. <laughs> if you can't, if you, if you take it apart and put it back together again, then you own that cube. You've, <laughs> you've, you've earned your rights to own that cube. <laughs> um, but a 3x3 three three is not difficult to put together. There's not very many pieces to do. But when, with larger cubes, instead of sorting by colors, you have to sort by colors for the, like I said, for the corners and the edges and the absolute center. But all of the other center pieces, just sort by shape, put them together again by shape, and you will be able to solve your cube as long as you can solve the cube. All right, um, that's it. I gotta go. Thank you for joining me. Come back. Thanks for following me. Come back and see me next time. I'm here. It is very difficult. It's, it's, it's not so difficult. Um, my trick for putting together the larger cubes that I do is um, I, I use either a teacup or an empty paper towel roll, empty toilet paper roll, so that I can, because the inner piece will sit on that, so that I can work on the, the bottom, the first four, first pieces, uh, and then, you know, I'll put like painter's tape on it to hold it together while I flip it over and then do the other things. Difficult for you? Oh, okay. So, um, I, Again, like I said, I have not taken a part bigger than a 7 by. So. All right. Thank you for joining me. I'm here most mornings. Yesterday I was not because I, I had a, an emergency babysitting session. But uh, other than that, I'm, and I'm, here Saturday, I'm here weekday mornings, Saturday mornings, and Friday evening. And on the Friday and Saturday, we can get more interesting. We can do more things. I am set up to teach in real time. I have a Zoom, I have a Zoom meeting room. So if any if any of you want to demonstrate, help me demonstrate, or have a newbie that doesn't know, only assemble the edges and corners. Okay. What what what's the biggest cube you have, Agent? The edges and the corners and the absolute center have to be correct, but all of the other centers, just by shape. Because the mathematics of the cube says it's impossible to get them wrong. All right, um, so if you have non-cuber friends who don't want to spend months don't want to put in all the hours you put in to learn they're like just teach me the secret I just want to do the cube I don't really care uh, this is it bring me that bring me your non cuber friends we'll have fun if you have any if you have an agent friends introduce me that'd be fun as well <laughs> all right you guys go be nice to yourself the centers also the weapons okay something auto corrected there does weapons mean corners? Thank you for sharing your day with me. I need, do need to go now, but I will be back tomorrow, and I'll be back Friday evening, and I'll solve the centers. Do you want, oh, you want me to do, on this one? You want me to do the centers here? Okay. 
I can do that before I leave. That's not a problem. Okay, I've already done, I've already done the white. So you can do you can use formula A for one face, but only one face. And everything else is done with form with formula B. So you just pick a piece that's incorrect. Hold the cube so that that incorrect piece is on the front. Hold the cube so that the where it wants to be is on the top. And then formula B is going to move three pieces around. So this piece is going to come and land in this spot. So I can bring down the orange, the red, the green, or the red. So first thing is to line it up so it's advantageous. That's your first horizontal. And then you follow the piece that you're placing. And it tells you what your two columns are. You don't have to memorize which columns to use. Come on, you can't. Okay. Okay, so you don't have, I've marked this piece so you can see what my eyes are following. Okay, I've lined it up. Now, the first up, and then I have to rotate the top so that this lands in a separate column. For the diagonals, that's, that's a little more tricky. For the, for the obliques, it doesn't matter which direction you go as long as you go into a second column. Because your second up has to be a second column. And this is, this, since whatever cube it landed, with the slice that it landed in, is your second up. Okay. Now, uh, because you can see by, by these edge pieces, which columns I'm working on. So reverse, down, and reverse, down, and then set the top. Okay. So this one's placed. Uh, here's a yellow piece. Okay. It's in the front. Yellow's on top. I can bring down this blue, this yellow, or the gre or the green. Um, the Blue has an orange corner, the green does not, so I'll bring the blue down because it helps me. So, up, slide, second up, reverse, down, reverse, down. And there you have it. So you're just moving one piece at a time. Here's a blue. Okay, it's on front. Just go on top. It'll land in this spot. So. I'm bringing down, bring, lining up the orange, okay, up, slide, second up, reverse, down, reverse, down, reset the top, and it's placed. Here's another one, here's another blue, I'm doing corners evidently. Okay, this blue will bring down this red, I don't want to, so I'm going to place this red piece instead, and so I can bring down either this yellow, this red, this orange, or this blue, <coughs> or this green, I'm going to bring down the orange so that I've lined it up. First up, slide to a separate column, second up, and then reverse, down, reverse, down, and set the top, and pick another piece. Just pick a piece that's wrong, throw it in the direction, and then pick another piece that's wrong. Over and over and over again. Uh, here is... Alright. Um, looking at... for Just looking at these two, I can either just do a piece at a time, or I can kind of uh, plan ahead. So, on the or everything on the every green on the orange side wants to up to the green. Every orange on the green side wants to come down. Uh, the opposite edges, want, opposite pieces want to go up as well. So... Um, so, uh, so I want to raise the green and reds and bring down the orange and blues. But the most important are the green and orange. So <coughs> I'll pick a piece. Oh, okay, this one wants to go up. And there's two of them together, so let's see what can, what I, what's possible. It's going to land right here. So I can bring down this blue and this yellow. This green and this yellow. These two reds. Or this blue and this orange. Okay, so these are the two most favorable to bring down to the orange side because I'm the green's going up, the orange is coming down, and the opposite of green is coming down. So the, I'm going to treat this piece, these two pieces, as one piece. So we go up, slide to a different column, second up, and then reverse, and my edges are there, to keep me track of where I am, and down. Okay. Here's no, then set the top and keep going. Here's an here's a green. Okay, it can I can bring down this blue. 
or this green that's not helpful or this okay or this orange and so I can th these three all want to come down and these three all want to come up so I go up slide to a different column treat them as one piece second up down down uh, to move each small tile you do an algorithm. Yes, formula B. Uh, slide up, slide up, slide down, slide down. For every left there's a right, for every up there's a down, for every horizontal, every other move is horizontal, and every other horizontal is the reverse of the one before it. So, to demonstrate on this one, you can see that only three pieces are moving. So, if I pick this piece, I go up to a different column, second up, reverse, down, reverse, down, and set the top and these are the three pieces that moved okay and the rest of the cube nothing happened to it so we we're only moving the pieces you're only moving the pieces that you want to move so line it up up slide up reverse down reverse down and because it's a commutator it doesn't ma it doesn't change anything except for what you want to move so at the first you know for the for the first half of the cube it looks like you don't know what you're doing it looks you can't really tell with what's happening or not but uh, as you go along more and more pieces fall into place and don't get displaced so that's the thing is that when you the of the algorithms that I knew before I was doing that yeah only three pieces I removed from the algorithms that I knew not only you had to memorize the algorithm and you had to memorize what that what that particular algorithm does and then you have to memorize which order to do which algorithms because this algorithm will mess up things that this algorithm did. And this is none of that. You just pick a piece, apply formula B to it, and then move on. So this green one is going to land right here. So I can bring down this green, or this orange, or this yellow, this red. So obviously the orange is the most advantageous. Okay, so I've lined it up. I go up, slide to a different column. Either direction will work. Second up, reverse down, reverse down, set the top, and then pick another piece. Pick another piece. Here's a red. Okay, it will bring down this green. Up, slide up, reverse down, reverse down. Okay, here's a yellow, or two yellows. Okay, this corner yellow. Uh, the only corner I can bring down is the green, so I'll do that. So, one up, slide, up, reverse, down, reverse, down, and set the top. I see you asked what, but I don't know what the question was. If you want to re repeat your question, I'll be happy to, ma to answer it. Thank you. Okay, pick another piece. Here's a green going on top. Okay, so it, it's going to land where this red is. Uh, there's two reds here, so I can bring both of them down because this orange wants to go up as well. Oh, you already understood A. Okay, so up, slide, up, reverse, down, reverse, down, set the top, and we're done. And we just, just over and over, let's see, are there any more corners? Nope, let's go, okay, let's move on then. All right, here's a green. Okay, it's going to land in this spot, so that's not advantageous. So I can bring down this green, or this yellow, or this red, or this green. So let's bring down the yellow. Okay. Um, the underneath it is the blue that also wants to move, and underneath it is the red that also wants to move. So I'm going to treat this as one piece. So I go up, slide, second up, reverse, down, reverse, down. Okay, move as many pieces. Here's some red. Hold a block of red. What can I do with that? It's going to land in these four corners. That will bring down a green and two blue. That's not helpful. This will bring down a blue and an orange and a yellow. The orange and yellow can be helpful. This will bring down a green and orange and a yellow. Okay, so if I do this, it's going to bring, bring down these four. 
three of them is are advantageous. One of them is a swap. Is a swap. It doesn't matter. So I'm going. I can do move all three of these at the same time. You big excuse me. It's a five by five. Thank you. Okay. So up, slide. Second up, reverse down, reverse down, and set the top. Okay. Here's a red. Okay. So it wants to land. I can bring down this orange or this green. I'll bring down the green. Up, up, down, down. And it's just more of the same over and over again. Um, and if, if you can do the five, there's nothing. <clears throat> um, like I said, this pattern works on every complexity Rubik's Cube. I used to teach, I used to start by teaching the three by three and then say, no, every, you already know everything about the four by four. Let me show you. And I would run into resistance. They're like, no, nope, that looks hard. I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to stop now. <laughs> so whenever I teach, I start with the five by five. Okay, so this one, there we go. There's an orange to come down. Up, slide, up, reverse, down, reverse, down, and set. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's see. Here's a blue. And here's an orange to come down. Okay. Up, up, down, down, and it's just lather and repeat more of the same. Here's a red and a blue that are going to go where this green and yellow are. Up, up, down, down, set. Okay, and follow that. Continue following that red up. I can. So this is going to land. There's a blue. And up, up, down, down. Okay, here's a red, red and green are going to go where the blue and orange are, so that's a good, good swap. Up, up, down, down. And the only, the only thing here is that you have to make sure that you're not copying any of your columns. It's always two separate columns. Here's a green, so it's going to have to move twice. So let's look for blue to come down. That's a good one. Up, up, down, down, and continue on. Uh, there's an orange, there's a yellow. Up, up, down, down. Okay, here's another green. Land to there. Or there's the blue. Uh, I have an extra yellow. I can bring the orange down. That's not helpful, so I won't. So up, up, down, down. Okay, let's see. Up, up, down, down. These two. Up, up, down, down. An orange, yellow, up, up, down, down. Okay. Blue. I can bring down the orange and the red. Or the two yellows. So let's just bring down the orange one. Leave the red where it is. Up, up, down, down. Blue. Lined up with an orange. Up, up, down, down. Red. Bring down this orange. Up, up, down, 
down, follow the red, bring down the blue, up, up, down, down. Okay. There's a green. Two greens will go up and bring down this blue and this orange, or and this blue as well. So I go up, slide to a different column, all three, reverse, and reverse. Okay. Here's red, lined up with the blue, up, up, down, down. There's a red. That's a green. I don't want to bring the green down. So I will do this one in a bit. Let's find, let's take this blue and bring down the yellow. Up, up, down, down. Set the top. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay. Here's a green. It's going to bring down a yellow. Up, up, down, down. Here's two greens. Up, up. Down, down, okay. All right, there's one more green and then green's done. So here's the green, lined it up, 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 down, down, okay. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. We've got, uh, oh, let's do the oranges. Up, up. Down, down, another one, up, up, down, down, set the top. If you forget to set the top, you just have to <laughs> do your reduction method there. All right, here's a, here's the orange. These three can go up for the yellow, up, up. Down, down, and then this orange, up, up, down, down, set the top, one more orange, line it up, up, slide up, reverse down, reverse down, okay, and I guess blue is next. There's a blue, uh, lines up with the red, up, up, down, down, here's the blue, corner, up, up, down, down, it's just a matter of lining them up where they want to land, up, up, down, down, set the top, and then one more, blue, to yellow, up, up, down, down, and continuing, okay, um, these two are lined up to there, so up, up, down, set the top. Uh, here's one center. So there you have it. Up, up, <laughs> down, <laughs> down. Okay. Uh, here's one. Okay. Line it up. Up, slide up, second up, first down, second down. Up, up, down, down, 
and line it up, 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 down, down. And you do the thing and it does the thing. <laughs> it always happens. It's already resolved. Okay. All right, you guys, go have a great day. Be nice to yourself. Have fun. And I will be back tomorrow. Thanks for joining me. Bye.